Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This video is from Induction Motors, uh, chapter number 6 of the 5th edition and 7 on the 4th edition. And here we'll be solving n chapter problem 6.3 or 7.3, depending on the edition. And these are the four questions that we'll be discussing in the examples. How many poles? Slip at the rated load, slip at one fourth of the rated load, and rotor electrical frequency. So let's just recall the, uh, you know, this is the stator winding, and it's a three phase winding. And because of the three phase, there will be a rotating magnetic field, and this magnetic field will rotate at a speed we call it n sync. This is synchronous uh, um, speed, so it is n sync. And because of this, there will be a voltage induced uh, in the rotor, there will be magnetic field produced, and the rotor will also rotate uh, and will try to catch the uh, synchronous uh, field, but it will always be lagging. So one point we have to keep in mind that in case of an induction motor, the N sync will be greater than N M or the rotor speed. So an induction motor, rotor can speed up to near synchronous speed, but it can never exactly reach the synchronous. Speed. So this is important point. And just to give you a little more idea, if the synchronous speed 300 and the rotary speed slightly less 2850 then the difference is called the slip speed in this case the slip speed is 150 revolutions per minute and we are more interested in calculating the slip so for slip we'll be using this formula n sync minus n motor or rotor divided by n sync and 200 percent Okay, now this is our question 6.3. A three phase 60 hertz induction motor runs at 715 RPM or revolutions per minute at no load. So, this is the stator and this is the rotor. When they're connected and there is no load connected with the rotor, then the rotor will run at a speed of 70, 715 revolutions per minute. But when this rotor is fully loaded, then its speed will reduce uh, to 670 revolutions per minute. And as I mentioned, these are the four questions that we have to solve. So we'll take care of them one by one. The first point is how many poles does the motor have? Now, what is given, let's note down that the rotor speed is given 715. This is at no load. And we had just discussed that the synchronous speed has to be greater than the rotor speed. So we can assume a value. We can assume any value. I'm just assuming uh, 750. That value has to be greater than this. 750 revolutions per minute. And we'll use this to calculate the number of poles. And this is the formula we know that n sync is 120 f e over p and f e is the line frequency p is pole from here p is 120 f e divided by n sync so let's plug in the values now plugging in the values f e is 60 hertz frequency and n sync we have assumed 750 so the number of pole is 9.6 now the number of poles cannot be a, a, a fraction, it has to be a whole number. And also it has to be even number because poles are in uh, even, even pairs. Okay, so instead of 9.6, we can say that we should have uh, 10 poles, so P should be 10. Now, with this assumption, we have to again verify this condition. Let's do that. 
make sure that it is a valid number, we must check that n shrink is greater than n m. So we have to calculate n shrink uh, for this new pole using the same formula. So n shrink is 720 revolutions per minute. So we had assumed 750, but when we take the number of pole to be 10, it comes to be 720 revolutions per minute. And this still is greater than 715 uh, of the rotor speed. So this is greater than 715. And therefore, our selection of the pole is correct. So finally, we can say that the number of poles equal to 10. Now part B, what is the slip at the rated load? These two are given. We know the slip formula. And sink minus nm divided by n sink. So we plug in the values. So our sink at the rated load will be 6.94%. And now the third part, what is the speed at one quarter of the rated load? Now this is slightly tricky. Bear with me. From this formula, we will use, or we can get the formula for speed of the rotor in this form. And here we need the value of uh, slip. Now this will be a new slip at one quarter of the load. Now, just by using common sense, we can see that as the load increases on the shaft, the rotor speed will decrease. And if the rotor speed decreases, then the obviously the slip uh, will increase because there will be a gap between the stator speed and the rotor speed. So the slip will increase. So contrary or conversely, we can say that as the load decreases, this was increasing here decreasing. So as the load decreases, the slip will also decrease. So we'll use this in our case because here the load is decreasing. So since the slip is directly proportional to the load, at one fourth load, the slip will also become one fourth. That means the new slip will be one fourth of the calculated slip earlier at full load. And this will be equal to 0 0.0171. Now we we'll use this slip to find the new rotor speed. So the resulting rotor speed at this slip or at this one quarter of the load will be 708 revolution. Okay, the last part is what is the rotor's electrical frequency at one quarter of the rated load. Now the formula for electrical frequency is given by this electrical frequency of the rotor or the rotor frequency is slip times the uh, state of frequency or the or supply frequency. So uh, at one quarter of the load FRE or simply FR will be equal to SFE or the electrical frequency. S we had already calculated 0 0.0171. FE in the question is given 60 hertz. So the new electrical rotor frequency will be 1.03 hertz. So I hope you have been able to follow this. Please let me know through your comments. Thank you.